we met up with Chick Corea at NJPAC for a performance with the Grammy-winning group Trilogy, featuring Chick, along with fellow jazz world greats, bassist Christian McBride and drummer Brian Blade. I've known Christian McBride and Brian Blade for a long time, he is separately and together. Then when, when I put the first of this trio together, it just, it, it had a, the, the synergy clicked right away. I'm familiar with the names like Bach and Beethoven and Mozart. Well, Chick Corea is our living version of that. Chick arrived mid-afternoon after a month-long tour in Japan with no sign of jet lag. The first order of business was a session with photographer Wolfgang Wesner. Chick has long admired his portraits of other jazz legends, like Herbie Hancock and Ron Carter. At 78, it's clear that there is no other place Chick Corea would rather be than at the piano. He warmed up with jazz tunes and a Mozart concerto as technicians fine-tune the piano and audio amps. I was practicing some of the stuff we're going to do tonight, and then I think the thing you were hearing that you thought was Mozart was Mozart. <laughs> That's one of the concerti I try to keep under my fingers to perform, actually. I performed that. Uh, it's number 24, C minor. After the sound check, we sat down with the legendary musician for a chat. We began by asking about some of his early influences. My prized memories and uh, experiences playing with Sarah Vaughan. She's one of my favorite singer musicians of all time. And um, I got to work with her for about a year and a half. She was, you know, she was bigger than life when I met her, but then right away she became very, very down to earth and very friendly and very encouraging and uh, like, like I was coming in 1967, I was coming uh, through a period of really wanting to play freely and, and break musical rules and do kind of wild things. I started to do that a bit on the gig with her behind her, you know, like change the harmonies. Or, and she just encouraged it. She really liked it a lot. Miles was right after Sarah, and actually while I was playing with Sarah, I got the call to go play with Miles. And I had to cancel a gig that I had with Sarah coming up in two weeks, and she really was mad at me for a while. In the 70s, Chick Corea filled stadiums with rock-inspired music. The press dubbed it fusion. Those kind of words to describe music usually come from, uh, from writers who write about music, not the musicians. The musicians never called that music fusion <laughs> at ever. Because every music, we, every time we play a song, it's always fusion. It's a fusion of something or other. But in the 70s, the media got a hold of that term. I just used to call it hard jazz. <laughs> you, you know, it, because, because uh, one of the elements that, that a lot of us took and used musically was, a, was kind of a rock and roll backbeat. And then uh, myself and uh, John McLaughlin used a, an electric guitar in, in a, with a sound that sounded like a rock guy. But, but a rock musician could never play the guitar like John McLaughlin. <laughs> Well, I've been a musician all my life. That's what I love to do. I like to play. And more, more and more, I love the effect of, of the music. It just makes people brighten up. Mm -hmm. 
My recent album is a little bit about that. It's called Antidote. Because we as musicians and artists, we're the antidote to things not going so well, or strife, cruelty, uh, inhumane things. We're the antidote. Thank you.